the point is I've just spent until one o'clock looking at options and I still don't have my answer. I'll look at this again tomorrow and see what's coming next. Kings Ferry Bridge, Kings Ferry Bridge. This is sailing vessel Britterly, Britterly, over. Kings Ferry Bridge, go ahead. Hello there, I am currently anchored in Sharfleet Creek and I'm looking at coming down the swale. I was just wondering if everything's operational today and I'm gonna be able to get a bridge lift at approximately 3 p.m. more or less, over. Understood, thanks very much. I'll speak to you later today. Good morning. Well, today is a new day. I slept really well last night, thankfully. And I woke up this morning and got to see where I am, because I didn't see it last night. So, I knew that there was land over there, you know, I've got electronic aids, um, but I couldn't see it, you know, I was close to it, but I just couldn't see it because it was so dark, but yeah, there we are, the depth was good, you know, I knew that, that's the, uh, the main thing, and our anchor, DC anchor, I'm very, very happy with that, really very happy, I did quite a lot of research before I went and bought it. And it's very, very good. So I learned some lessons yesterday. Um, you know, I started off conservatively, but it wasn't conservative enough. You know, solo night sailing is not something to be taken lightly. I learned that yesterday and today onwards and upwards, but learning the lessons and the mistakes that I've made uh, in the past, I'm gonna take them forward and hopefully not make them again. So I have revised my plans. Uh, I was looking at doing longer legs, but now I have reduced the distance and I'm gonna just wait for weather windows. I'm gonna anchorage hop and wait for weather windows. Um, and then, you know, when I do need to go into port to get more food and stuff like that, then I'll, I'll, I'll do that, of course. So today's route, I'm gonna be leaving this anchorage, going down the Swale, which is between an island, the Isle of Sheppey and the mainland and uh, if I get going quickly, I'll have current in favour for most of the journey, which will be helpful. It's it's shallow, and you know if uh, if it was spring tides, I would be in danger of running aground today in certain parts of this this trip. But uh, because it's closer to Neeps, the lowest water level is 1.6 metres above datum. So uh, you know I've got I've got enough water under me today. So uh, yeah, we've got bridges to go under. There's one that's 35 meters tall, so I don't have to worry about that one. I've caught and contacted this bridge, Kingsbury Bridge on VHF to make sure that it's working everything today, which it is. So I'll give them a shout on VHF just before I get there and hopefully they'll, they'll lift it for me without me hanging around too long, but we'll see. And then down here, and I'm going to come to the anchorage around about here, Hearty Ferry kind of area. Um, the weather's not great. It's variable, it's, it's between 17 and about 22 knots at the minute. So learning from yesterday, the plan now is just to take short steps, manageable steps rather than, you know, steps which are too long for my little legs. So let's get going guys, gonna go and raise the anchor now. And let's hit the road. I've got you clamped to my chest on the GoPro. I'll try and give you a view of what I'm doing, but it, I mean, you know, I'm really struggling to do this, so just bear with me with the video quality. maintain that. Just give me a hand. So 21, 22 knots. Let's see how this goes.
I had a bit of a nightmare last night. Our last boat had um, those little rubber things that go in your chain. And in the four years that we owned her, did loads of anchoring. None of them, none of them ever fell off. Well, last night I didn't know how much chain I had out because the flipping markers kept falling off. They must be rubbish quality ones, these are a different material or whatever. So I ended up having to count out I've got 100 meters of chain in here. I had to count out what was left in here to work out what was out down there, which was very inconvenient. Okay. The anchor's off the sea, but there, I need to go. So the anchor is just dangling off the bow now, a few metres down. I think the boat is on a good course there for a while, so I'm going to go and We haven't named this autopilot yet. We did on the last boat, the tiller pilot. Uh, is that just us or does anybody else out there name their autopilots? They're like a crew member, aren't they? They're incredibly, incredibly useful. To have. Okay, so I'll just stand on the chain now. Get rid of my little invention. Yeah, this is freer than I'd like it to be. I can't prove it. I only, only made this a few days ago, so just testing it out, really. Very happy with it, though, so far. So I left that chain on the cleat there, just in case I had to abort and, and anchor again. Does anybody else do that? Is that a good idea, do you think, or not? Be anchored again shortly, so I'm not going to worry too much about this. But I'll just give it a couple of turns, tie it down. I can take the anchor ball down now as well. Ay, 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 so much to do when you're in your own. You know what, I'm just going to shove that in there because I'll be using it again soon. I don't know how seaman like that is, but I'm going to get back to the helm. Well, I've just put the, uh, the Italian flag up first and the ensign as well. There's just so much going on when, you, you know, you don't realise. It's like anything in life, you know, I remember I've done jobs in the past where you see people with responsibility in that job and you think, oh, that's easy, I could do that, dead easy. And then when you find yourself doing that job, it's only then that you realise just how complex they can be. And then you really appreciate the guys that have gone before you, you know. I guess that's always the way in life.
we're just about to turn from the River Medway into the Swale and the first place we'll come across is Queenborough which is where you can see the masts over there East Cardinal Boy with the yellow in the middle and the arrows pointing to the black top and bottom and it looks like a letter E. Well, do you know what guys, I got the head tail out and because part of that is I want to I wanna sail for you guys as well, you know this is a sailing channel, I want to I wanna try and sail when I can. I did it over there and I wound down the revs on the engine just to, just to kind of imagine what might happen if, if my prop get, gets caught in a piece of rope or something and I was blown onto that lee shore in no time. So what I'm going to do is put the headsail away and I'm going to motor the rest of this journey and you know what I don't care I'm not going to be a hero I'm not trying to be a hero um, slow and steady wins the race you know we'll, there'll be plenty of time for sailing when we're in the med right now I want to stay safe and I thought I'd share this with you because the, the whole point of our channel is it's not this isn't just us this isn't us sailing this is about helping you guys to sail and you know I've got nothing to teach really, but I'm on a learning curve myself and if I share things like this with you openly and honestly, then hopefully you can learn from, from what I'm doing too. So um, there you go, that's what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a headsail away, I'm going to motor. Right then, we're on a straight bit. It's time to go and get some food. The boat's looking quite tidy. 
But that's only because everything is in the aft cabin. The whole world is in there. It's awful. It's uh, forecast to rain later today. So in preparation for that, I've got a plastic bag for this big camera and I've got a yellow fisherman's hat to put on which will be extremely trendy or maybe not but it should hopefully keep my noggin dry and my neck and therefore my back there's a fella walking over there hello fella walking well I'm enjoying this lack of stress at the moment So I'm here eating my Tesco roast chicken and bacon pasta. Meal deal, because only the best will do. Uh, and I got a, a burning smell, and I was like, oh my goodness me. So I started to explore around the boat, and fortunately, I went to the upwind side of the boat. And I can still smell it over there, so somebody's obviously burning something upwind of me. But for a moment, it had me, uh, concerned. <laughs> We're coming up to um, the bridges shortly. Yeah, if you can come round to the near bridge please, circle around and then we'll get you through as soon as we can. Roger that sir, thank you very much. I'll see you shortly. So the first bridge, the road bridge, is 35 metres at highest astronomical tide. So we've got plenty of clearance there. But the next bridge is only three and a half meters tall. So we of course can't get through there. And they're gonna have to lift it. It's a railway bridge. I've just spoken to the guys and they've very kindly agreed to lift it for me at some point soon. So when they give me the all clear, I can go through there. Even though you know there's lots and lots and lots of clearance, you still can't help but look up. It's uh, gusting up to 28 knots at the moment. But there we are for now, all is good. And hopefully the guys will let me through soon. to the gentleman on the radio who told me to circle around underneath the bridge. So, um, I was happy to stay as I was doing before but you know he asked me to circle around and he's the guy who's got control of the button so I'm just trying to please him I'm circling around. <laughs> I need the toilet, I need to do a wee. Business guys. The lights flashed, the bells rang, and the bridge is opening. I can have a wee soon. <laughs> well, I hope so anyway. The bridge is open, he's beeped his horn. Time for me to get through there. There we go. I've never done that before. You 
can see how people use the tides here, the fishing boat there, free haul out, and do whatever kind of work you like. I just saw, there it is, there's a cormorant over there flying now. It was in the water fishing, it's very pretty. And then to contrast the nature, on this side we have some industry and a Dutch vessel being loaded or unloaded right now. I believe it's aggregates in this kind of area. You can see some piles of them over there. I believe, could be wrong. But. I'm actually enjoying this now and I'm glad I put the Genoa away because yeah, this is just more relaxing than it would be with sail flapping about and giving me more things to do. To be honest, I'm really quite surprised at how much you've got to do when you're solo. I mean, that sounds a bit silly because of course you've got to do everything, but you know, thinking about something and then doing it are two totally different things. With the naked eye you can kind of see where the shallow bit is there and it didn't look really very nice. Got me a little bit nervous there for a moment. I thought I was going to end up like these guys. for me guys. I've only got 35 centimetres under my keel at the moment.